Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of KTN Live at One this Sunday, the 30th of June 2013. Hope you're well this afternoon. My name is Betty Kalom. Now, the Mau Mau War Veterans Associations has asked the Law Society of Kenya to stop interfering with the ongoing process of compensating the war veterans. Addressing a press conference this morning, the Secretary General for the Association, Gitu Wakahengeri, said it is surprising to see the LSK purporting to have the interests of Mau Mau War Veterans at heart, yet it had not supported the war veterans in their long struggle for compensation. LSK has embarked on an audit of all Mau Mau veterans in light of the two 2.6 billion shillings the British government has given for their settlement. LSK has never been anywhere near our case. LSK has never been offered to help us. And uh, neither have we asked LSK to help us. We filed our matter in London and we are satisfied with the way our lawyers have handled our matter. We also know that the British High Commissioner in Nairobi said our people, uh, other people are also free to bring cases to London. Let Eric Motoa work with if he so wishes. It is therefore clear that all this continue continued opposition to our settlement by Mutua is nothing but pursuit of personal interest and an attempt to demonstrate to his clients that he is still working for them. Now, transport along the Nyeri Karatina Highway was disrupted for several hours after students of the Kagumo Teachers College barricaded a section of the highway. The students were protesting after the body of one of their colleagues was found dead on the highway. The students claim Julius Kimani, a second year student, may have been killed elsewhere and his body dumped on the highway. The students now want the government to investigate the circumstances that may have led to the death of the student. They also want speed bumps erected on the stretch of the highway near the college. The students were later addressed by their student leader as well as their area member of parliament, Esther Murugi. Situ naomba hivi. Watu wa public works. Watu saidie kutuwekea pumps hapa inji ya nyeri karatina na pia ile inji ya gatitu hapa mbaka mkuruweini. What I've heard from the students is the issue is not really the accident. But they feel that the, the student was not, it did not die due to an accident and they feel that he must have been killed as elsewhere and brought here. So we are also going to investigate, I've talked to the OCS so that he can really do other investigation so that justice can be achieved for the student. This road is really a killer and that is why you know also at Skuta we have bumps and this one we have requested and we are also going to ask for more bumps outside the Kagumo College. To politics now and a section of members of the National Assembly from Western Kenya elected on various opposition party tickets now say they want to cooperate with the Jubilee government to ensure their region benefits from the Uhuru Kenyatta regime. Speaking during the Thanksgiving ceremonies for the Teso South MP Mary Emase and Teso North MP Arthur Odera, the Deputy President William Ruto promised them that the cooperation is more than welcome, especially for the Jubilee 2017 re-election campaign. So tunataka tukiwa hapa nyumbani kama western tuanze tuungane tuwe kitu kimoja sio tuungane pamoja tu, tupatie support mheshimiwa Ruto na mheshimiwa Kinyata ndio wawe na nafasi ya kutusaidia sisi Nikirudi Kolomani nataka kuambia tumetembea vizuri na nyinyi sisi tunaungana pamoja kwa sababu tunataka maendeleo Na wa MP wale wa mko nao Western saa hii tumekaa pamoja na muunge serikali ya ya Mheshimiwa Uhuru na Mheshimiwa Ruto watuletee maendeleo tuendelee mbele. Ile mmeongelea ile ingine ya Malakisi ile jinari mimi na kamati yangu tutakuja tuangalie halafu tupatie report deputy president mara moja. Sawa sawa. Nataka kuambia nyinyi kwamba hii ni digital government. Uhuru Naruto ni serikali ya digital. 
Sile vitu walitu haiti Wameamua watatutendea yote Mimi nataka ni seme ya santeni sana kwenu Na tuko tayari kufanya kazi pamoja na nyinyi Hawa viongozi muliotupa Arthur Odera na Mary Emase Na wale wabunge wengine wote Mimi nataka ni waeleze Kila kiongozi aliyechaguliwa Sisi kama serikali ya jubilii Tuko tayari kufanya kazi na wao Sasa sio wakati wa kusema huyu ni wachama hii Ama uli ni, huyu ni wachama ile Sisi tunatambua kila kiongozi aliyechaguliwa kwa chama yeyote sasa ni nafasi yetu ya kufanya kazi kwa wakenya wote bila ya kubagua dini ama rangi ama mahali mtu anatoka A shooting range used by military officers for their training in Gilgil is now causing fear and panic among residents with bullets straying to their homesteads. Residents say whenever the officers come out to train, they have to take cover. A section of residents who claim to have suffered injuries caused by stray bullets say efforts to secure a compensation have borne no fruits. And as KTN's Wilkie Stanyabo reports, they now want the government to find a new location for the military's shooting range. Target shimmers, as if taunting one to defy the distance and hit the bull's eye. Thousands of bullets have sailed through the air to hit it. Dozens more have fallen short of the mark, while others, we are now told, have missed the mark completely and strayed into the homes of those who live near the shooting range at the Kenyatta Training Barracks in Gilgil. This shooting range is used for target practice by military officers under training. But in recent times, residents have learned to take cover whenever the training sessions begin. Unasikia mri ambaye si mzuri, unastuka. Anasema, viu! Haka unasikia kamepita. Just as Kasiani still bears cars on his right hand from injuries he sustained two years ago when a stray bullet came sailing through the air. Kabla hata tufikiria kutoka kwa shambo tutoa tuchukue hizo video zetu tuende eh hizo ni marisasi ilianza kufika kwenye tujukua in fact mimi hata sikuwa nimejua hii risasi imepiga lakini venye mtu mwenye alikuwa nyumba yangu akaniambia hey kwani damu ni ya nini kwenda kuangalia nikapata kweli nimepiga risasi the 24 year old casual laborer reported the matter and was treated at the military hospital after senior military officials were alerted Bernard Cairo has never repaired the shattered window pane that reminds him of the day when a bullet came flying through the air as his children were playing outside. Kijana nikampata na akayasema asikia kitu kimepita vwa. Ile ilimpiga na ingine ikapi. Sasa kumbe ile risasi ilipita ndiyo hii ilikuja ikakonga wapi? Ikapenya hapa. Cairo recorded a statement and the spent cartridge was handed over to the officers who visited the scene. And that was the end of that. Efforts to pursue compensation from the military have not borne fruit. But compensation is not the most pressing need. What they crave, residents tell us, is freedom from the fear that when the shooting starts, they will become the human targets. Kama sa imi nikipata mtoto sasa ujua kaa kwa nyumbo na kaa na wasiwasi. Ujua kisikio risasi ya hizi kaa. Tungependa in the interest of the public. Watoa hile jiko hapa, wapereke pahari haita umiza watu. A cautious silence now falling over the town following reports that the military has suspended use of the range. For decades, Kenya's tourist excelling point has been its incredible wildlife scattered across the country. But the promotion of domestic tourism has seen the emergence of non-traditional tourism opportunities and locations. Well, one such place is Kisumu County's Ndera Island, a stunning place that has helped redefine what tourism is. Furthermore, brings us a glimpse into one of Kenya's hidden treasures. This award-winning advert that captured the country's imagination three years ago was built off the back of stunning views from across Kenya's eight provinces. In the midst of it were splendid views of Lake Victoria, with Nere Island being a key feature. According to Luo Folklore, the community's first stop in its migration south from the Nile Valley was on the last shorelines of the mainland due to the beauty they found here. We have impalas, we have monkeys, we have the lake shore animals like the crocodile and the hippos 
and uh, mostly the scenic view of the park. Gazetted in 1986 as a national park, Ndere Island sits among six smaller islands with stunning views of Homer Bay, Kisumu and Siaya counties located right across the lake. It is also a short distance from Kitmikai, the mysterious rock of Seme. The island has a paucity of wildlife with a few fish eagles, swifts, crocodiles and impalas. But the Kenya Wildlife Service is planning to introduce some fauna. The organization has organized a restocking program which is due in the month of July 2013. And we are going to introduce about uh, 17 types of different species in Ndere Island. And that is what is going to make a difference in that particular national park. And uh, there are also plans in place that if we see that place working well, possibilities of introducing rhinos there also for security purposes will be very important and paramount. Despite its prime location, Ndere Island is a conspicuous case of unexploited potential with hardly any accommodation for local or international tourists, forcing those who come here to stay in tented camps. Ndere is a unique park. We normally say we have few parks where you can walk. Ndere being one of them that you can really hike free without any arm and you can do a lot of uh, maybe wedding shows maybe team buildings and uh, mostly you can shoot even some uh, films over the last year residents here have partnered with the kws to initiate various projects such as tour boats and the Ndere safari lodge for conferencing and small group sleepovers from kisumu county i am fredo mulo it is indeed a beautiful country. To our weekly Survivor Series, today we feature a familiar face who survived a grenade attack. The grenade attack made Kamukunji MP Yusuf Hassan to realize that there is more to life than work. For years, he had taken his family for granted, working tirelessly to give them a better life. He also says that he was blind to the physically challenged people in society until early December last year when he stared death right in the face. Catherine Amwantho has the details. On December 6, 2012, like any other day, Yusuf Hassan went to the Al Hidayah Community Center for Salatul Isha, also known as Evening Prayers. It was about uh, 8.30 uh, in the evening when I came out of the Al Hidayah Community Center uh, and I stepped out uh, and I was greeting uh, people who had just come out of the uh, mosque uh, for prayers. Uh, some few minutes, uh, two or three minutes after the uh, greetings, I had a crack and a loud bang. And uh, two or three of the people who uh, were greeting me were lifted off the ground and I had them screaming. Yusuf says the events unfolded in slow motion and it took him a while to notice that he too had become a victim of a terror attack. Uh, I fell on my back, uh, I could see uh, my foot dangling uh, from my right limb. I could also see blood and, uh, uh, on, uh, on my left leg. I could also feel some pain on my uh, left arm. At that moment, I didn't know what had happened. Yusuf's body went into survival mode. His brain triggered the release of adrenaline, which excites the body and in his case, even numbed his pain. This way he could concentrate on the task at hand, which was staying alive. Well, actually, I was concentrating on uh, getting help uh, to the injured, uh, particularly the two children who were lying next to me. One of them was still um, able to um, scream. Uh, the other one was silent. It was uh, survival, trying to, uh, to save uh, uh, my life and the lives of those other people who were affected. Uh, and um, I could not imagine uh, that uh, on a such a nice uh, Friday, I had been to several parts of the constituency. It was a beautiful day that it could end so horribly. Uh, I didn't know the extent of the, the damage uh, uh, that the bomb had caused uh, because it's a very cruel weapon. Uh, the first thing it does is that it tears apart your muscles. It destroys the tendons and then it cracks the bones. So it has that uh, 
multiple effect on the body and it's also a chemical thing and so uh, parts of my skin peeled off um, I had a lot of pain but when you go into an hospital and you get the kind of medical attention that I was getting uh, m medication modern medication now somehow alleviates uh, the intense pain that most uh, and trauma that uh, most people suffer the other thing also was the trauma I was feeling waves of, um, of pain uh, and um, nightmares about uh, 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 being in an attack, uh, falling off a place. So it took quite a, a bit of time. It took uh, maybe two to three weeks uh, for me to be able to uh, uh, overcome uh, the trauma. The grenade attack happened at such a crucial time for Yusuf Hassan, who at the time was gearing up for the general election. Instead of campaigning on the streets of Kamkunji, Yusuf was stuck in a hospital bed, yet he won by a landslide. Four weeks ago, Yusuf was discharged. He and his family had to do a whole lot of adjusting, especially emotionally. They were, uh, at the beginning, very shocked um, uh, and um, angered by what has happened. Uh, but it has actually brought my family uh, together because like my son was out of the country, he's come back. Uh, he's been spending a lot of time with me. Uh, my daughter who is uh, studying outside as well has been in and out. She's come to see me. Um, my kids are all around me all the time. And one of the great things of going back home, in fact, is the fact that the support and the presence of the family is part of the healing process. It accelerates your, your healing. It builds your... Uh, psychology in terms of uh, thinking positively and so it is really wonderful to have them all and uh, they have been extremely supportive I I'm beginning to feel that I should be spending more time with them while Yusuf his wife and five children have adjusted well and even had to redecorate their home coming back to Parliament however is a constant reminder that he even if it's for a short while is disabled Parliament has no room for disabled people uh, in fact, first of all, it clearly uh, tells you how fragile uh, we human beings are uh, and um, how we take uh, for granted a lot of things in our lives. Uh, we don't see the, uh, the poor and underprivileged uh, because when you're doing well, uh, you, you focus uh, on the things that are of concern to you. You become self-centered. Uh, I'm now much more outward looking I see more things than that I hadn't seen before. For example, uh, I'm really shocked uh, by how disadvantaged our disabled people are. Access to public buildings, access to facilities, uh, they, they are invisible in our eyes. Uh, for example, people who are on crutches are frightened uh, of um, using public uh, uh, pavements and uh, public facilities because of the crowds. Are they going to be bumped off, a little touch could damage them. And secondly, how marginalized they are, because there is, even as a member of parliament, I, I can't uh, access it. Uh, many parts of uh, the national parliament. There's no access for, there's no wheelchair access. There's no access for, this, there are no toilets. Um, so there are a lot of little things that you have to think when you're going out of your house in the morning. Uh, you have to plan your day uh, much more rigorously than if you're an able person. Yusuf is not about to give up. He says he has been given a new lease of life and he intends to make every moment count. The saying goes, with every cloud, there is always a silver lining. Before 2012 December, Honorable Yusuf Hassan didn't realize that there was a certain lack within our society when it came to protecting the rights of people living with disabilities. Even though Yusuf Hassan will end up walking by the end of the year, people living with disabilities can be assured that they have him in their corner. Catherine Omwando for the Survivor Series. Thank you, Honorable Yusuf, for sharing your story. Now, U.S. President Barack Obama has hailed the moral carriage of Nelson Mandela, who he said was an inspiration to the world. Obama, during his visit to South Africa, met the family of South Africa's ailing anti apartheid hero, Nelson Mandela, offering words of comfort and praising the critically ill retired statesman begin, as course, one of history's greatest figures. I'm saying that our thoughts uh, and those of uh, Americans and, and people all around the world uh, are with Nelson Mandela and his family uh, and all of South Africans. Uh, 
the struggle here against apartheid for freedom, Madiba's moral courage, this country's historic transition to a free and democratic nation uh, has been a personal inspiration to me. It has been uh, an inspiration to the world, and it continues to be. The United States views South Africa as a critical partner. Uh, and Mr. President, uh, I very much appreciate uh, our personal friendship and partnership. Um, as you've noted, Africa's on the rise, and South Africa uh, is always at the forefront uh, of trends in Africa. Well, KTN Live at 1 takes a short commercial break. Don't go away. Sports is up next. Stay tuned.